Some of you have thought of suicide. Some of you are in the darkest of darkest valleys. And I was there once too. I was eight years old, depressed. Nine years old, even darker. At 10 years old, I came to the edge. And I thought to myself, there is no hope. At age 10, I tried to drown myself in six inches of 15 centimeters of water in my home. I told my dad I just wanted to relax. But really, I wanted to end my life. I had enough. The first two times I rolled over, I was trying to work out how much air I hold in my lungs before I let it out. And the third time, in my mind, knowing that I wanted to get out of here because of the bullying in my life, because I was going to be a burden to my parents and I had nothing to look forward to, I realized at that moment that if I actually went through with committing suicide, I would leave a greater burden for my parents than they already had. So when I saw in my mind my mom and my dad and my brother crying at my grave, if I went through with it, that one thought saved me. The power of encouragement. You can save a person's life. You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things. Number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. If I gave you a billion dollars, would you be happy? If you gave me a billion dollars, I'd be very happy. But then if my mum dies tonight, am I happy? No. life is worth living when you find purpose Nick I don't know what my purpose is I don't know my parents want me to do this my teachers want me to do that my friends think that I should do this and I don't know what to do and you're torn man you don't know what to do you have to make important decisions man you don't know what to do who do you believe follow your heart If that's who you want to be, if that's what you want to do in life, then walk to it. One day at a time. You gotta come to the truth of knowing who you are and why you're here. William Barclay, he said, the greatest two days in anyone's life, the day you were born and the day you knew why. I know that there are a billion people going hungry today. I know that this year a million people will commit suicide. It's one every 40 seconds. I know today there are 120 million slaves, and I've met sex slaves. So many people tease each other. Oh, you know, you're too short, you're too tall, you look whatever. A different hair and all that. It doesn't matter. See, the thing is, when you're in school, when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? I know so many teenagers who look themselves in the mirror and wish that they had a different body. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure? And no one really likes you. No one really cares about you. That's what this world is. I want to look like her. I want to look, if I was taller, shorter, smarter, more popular, whatever you want. It's not enough. And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. That we're not good enough. And you know, we have to change ourselves. And You know, so many people put me down and say, Nick, you look too weird and no one's really your friend and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I couldn't change anything. It's not like just fixing my hair one day and everything's fine. It's not like, you know, just whatever. I couldn't change my circumstance. 
I couldn't just one day wake up and say, hey, give me arms and legs. I need arms and legs. But it was so hard because people put me down. And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. That I'd never ever be somebody who people would like or people would accept. And it was so hard, man. I thought to myself, I, you know, I can't go on, the, go on the soccer field like everybody else. And I can't ride my bike and I can't skateboard and all these sort of things. And I started getting depressed. I thought, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, do you, are, are you just here to live to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? And I had questions and no answers. And I asked my mom and dad, why did this happen? I asked doctors, why did this happen? And they, they don't know. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. Every single human being has value and my value is not determined on how I look or what job I have or where I'm from, where I was born, how much money, all that stuff is nothing. And it's funny how the friends around you sort of determine who you are. You change yourself. You come to school. And everybody swore around me at high school, so I started swearing. Why? Because it's the cool thing to do. Everybody swears. So I don't want to be left out. And I want to be accepted, so I started swearing. You go to a party, everybody's drinking, so you drink. Why? Well, everybody else around me is doing a big deal. And you start losing yourself, and you start putting your security in temporary things. You start putting your happiness in things that won't last. You can get drunk all you like, but in the morning, you're going to be sober with a headache with the same problems. Nick, you're not good enough. Nick, just give up. Nick, you're never going to get a job. You won't get married. You can't even hold your wife's hand. What kind of a father are you going to be if you can't even pick up your kids when they're crying? But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times... If I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. Does that make sense? And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. That we have a choice, either to be angry for what we don't have or be thankful for what we do have. You have a choice every day you come to school to either tease somebody, gossip about somebody, or you can go up to them and encourage them. There's still hope. I'm not here today to tell you that I understand your pain. I don't know how it feels to be abused. I don't know how it feels to feel, quote, fat and you've got an eating disorder. I don't know how it feels to have a broken home. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? At age 10, I actually tried to commit suicide by trying to drown myself in my bathtub. And the only reason I decided to stay was because I didn't want to leave my loved ones with that pain. So I decided to give my broken pieces a chance. Man, am I glad that I'm still here. Today, I still have no arms, no legs. But everything's changed. When I'm 24 years old, five, six years ago, I was in California. And I never met anybody else like me. When I was 10 years old, I wish I would have met somebody like me. Never did. Didn't get that miracle. But at 24, in California, I saw a little boy with no arms and no legs. 19 months old. Just like me. 
I knew he was going to be bullied. I knew he was going to go through depression. I knew he would feel alone. I knew that he would get worried if he's ever going to have a girlfriend and so on and so on. I got the father to bring him up on stage in front of 2,000 people. And everyone was crying. And it was a materialization of when you don't get a miracle, you can be a miracle for someone else. Think of the three biggest discouragers in your life. They're not your biggest discouragers. You are. But I hope you are inspired to know that if I can dream big, then so can you. There are no walls. Find your peace and you'll make your walls doors.